Hey guys and welcome back to another episode of Garage Bullion and to another episode on my flood damaged Porsche 968. In the previous episode we removed the rear bumper cover and bumper, we cleaned everything up and we reinstalled the rear lights together with a bumper cover and a new bead. If you missed that episode I'll put a link for you up above to catch up. But in this episode we are going to continue working on the bumpers and this time we are going to focus on the front bumper. I'm going to remove this bumper completely and we are going to replace these beads that you see here and we are going to clean everything that we find that's full of salt and mud and then once that is done we'll have it all buttoned up so that in the next episode we can start working on some of the interior parts again. So sit back, relax and let's start working. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is to remove this bottom part of the bumper and that is done by loosening a whole bunch of these little Phillips head screws. There's probably about 15 of them. With all the Phillips head screws removed from the bottom, we now have to go inside the wheel well and just loosen this nut. There's one on this side and one on the other side. Nice. So here on the front, there's a little cap. Mine was a very bad shape, but I managed to push it in there and there's another little uh, Phillips head screw that needs to come out from down there. Wow, she's nasty. We just need to get one more on that side. Let's see if we can push this one in as well. That one is also gone. Good stuff. Wow, just look how dirty this thing is. I think I can save at least a kilogram just by cleaning out all this mud and salt that's sitting in here. I'm gonna probably order some new hardware because I'm not sure that this stuff is up to snuff anymore. I'll pop them in the cleaner and see how they end up, but I think a new set might just be worth it. Um, for the rest, it looks to be in good shape. It's just a little bit battered, but that's normal for any car that's got something on the bottom here. Oh, look, just look at that. Wow. So uh, on both ends of this bottom plate, um, this nut broke off. It was just too far gone and too rusted. And this seems to be one plate that sits underneath here. I will see if I can order them new and whether they are reasonably priced. If not, then there's a rivet here that I can see and I will then just drill that rivet out and then see if we can just put a normal stud into this guy and, and make it work that way. I might do that anyway. But for now, let's clean up. Now that we have the bottom section of the bumper removed, the next job is to remove the three bolts that hold the bumper to the fender. You can get to them fairly easily with a couple of extensions. You can see them reasonably well from underneath the car. There's one of them sitting right there and then two more on the inside of this fender liner. Now, the instruction says you don't have to remove the fender liner. And this is where I'm going to deviate a little bit from the way that you need to do this should you be removing your bumper. The reason I'm going to deviate is because there's a lot of junk inside here that I think it's better for me to tackle now. So thankfully, I also had some feedback from you guys on the previous video about how to remove this little security nut. And the advice was very straightforward and something I should have thought about. And that is to use an extractor set like this one. Now, I do not have an 18 millimeter extractor in there, but I do have a 19 millimeter extractor. And what do you know? It fits onto this security nut. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to hammer it slightly into the nut. So it has a bit of bite and then we're going to try and remove it. Here goes nothing, guys. Need more force. Ha! 
it snapped. Yeah, not great. But let's move on from here. My guess it was designed to do this, that it's got a weak spot, so that people can't steal your wheel with these things. Right. All right, so since I can't get this liner out, I have to get at these bolts with some extensions, but that's the first one we have to pull out. And if I go on the other side of the liner, I think you guys can maybe see, let me just get some focus there. That's the one. And then up there is the other one. So what I've done is I've made a huge extension on my gun. And uh, that's the way I'm going to get this out of the car. I really did need this long extension set to get in there. Maybe there's another way to get in there. But this seemed to work for me. Now that we have everything on the bottom loosened up, now we can go to the top and loosen the four Phillips head screws at the top. And then in theory, we should be able to pull this bumper from the car. So let's see what we've got to deal with on this side. Again, just a lot of dirt, but nothing that is really scary. All right, so I'm just going to quickly start vacuuming again because this stuff is making such a mess. Um, you can see the salt on this bumper is quite loose, so I can easily vacuum that up. Um, once that is done, I can take the bumper off and then we can go outside to clean this, the bumper and that bumper. But at the moment it's raining as you can probably hear. So I'm not really keen on standing outside in the cold wet rain to wash. So we'll do that hopefully on another day. So after many, many hours of cleaning with a toothbrush and all kinds of goodies that I could find, I can now say that I am happy with the quality of the cleaning. You can see inside there, all is clean. All the wiring harnesses are clean. The radiator is clean. The oil cooler is clean or the power steering pump is clean. I'm not exactly sure. I think that's a power steering cooler. Down there is an oil cooler. All of the connectors have been cleaned. The buckets are clean. The springs are clean. And as you can see, I have discovered a little bit of rust, but this is not due to the flooding. This is just due to that hardening of the rubber bead. And that starts rubbing against the fender. So what I'll do is I'll just sand this down a little bit until I get to clean metal. And then I'll get a bit of touch-up paint and just touch this up so it looks nice again. I'm not too worried about that. So now that we have the body clean, I want to go strip and clean the bumper.
Okay. It should now just come out and it is good. One more thing to clean. Last thing is to just pull off the nastiness that is uh, this rubber bead. I don't think that double-sided tape was the way you are meant to put this on. Maybe it is. Um, I'll have to go check the instructions. But as you can see, these things are rock hard. Now, with the bumper completely stripped down, I'm going to go outside. And you guys can hear it raining again, but um, I'm going to go outside and I'm going to wash this. No point in filming it because... Um, all you'll see is rain but um, when you see me next we'll have a clean bumper later that same evening all right so you can see the bumper is now back in the garage and it's all nice and clean all of the salt is gone from everywhere so it's looking really nice and fresh even on the inside it's looking really good the only challenge is that i've discovered some damage there there and there so obviously the previous owner at some point touched something so um, in the long run I'll probably have to get this bumper painted but that's not on my agenda for now for now I want to just build the car up we can always tackle this at a later point but let me also show you the trim so as you can see the trim pieces have cleaned up really really nicely they look like they'll be back to their original state fairly soon uh, they're still a little bit shiny and that's because they are soaking in bumper and trim gel this is stuff i've been using forever it's phenomenal to bring back black so um, i'm just going to let it sit here for probably a day or so and then i'll wipe off the excess and then i should be able to put it back on the car looking really really nice and crisp and you can see also this little grill has been treated so this will be drying out and then i'll be wiping that down as well and also the horns have been cleaned up and they're looking nice and fresh so that means we can now actually start rebuilding this front end again so i'm going to set you guys up and we're going to start putting back the parts I managed to get this security nut out of the car and um, I still did it the way I tried earlier but I used better quality stuff meaning I used the impact socket and I got this impact socket from my friendly Porsche Center Porsche Center Gelderland I gave them a call and said to them guys I'm stuck I can't get it off and I've got a 19 millimeter but it just snapped off and they said well you have to have a bigger one and why don't you just come and borrow ours and you can bring it back tomorrow and that's what I've done and voila it worked all right on with the rest So right in there is the bolt I have to get to and it's nearly impossible to get to it. And the only way to get there is with this 8mm wrench. But that, even that's a little bit too short so it's just a constant struggle. But we'll get there. Alright, that'll be it. This little support that hangs under the radiator, um, when I took it off the car, it had a foam strip on it. I don't know if this was from factory or the, whether this was done afterwards by someone else, but what I've done is I've gone to the hardware store and just bought a bit of isolation strips for windows, because this can be outside and it's fairly strong and robust, and I stuck it on here again. No idea if it needs to be there, but I figured I had it on there and... Uh, 
I want to put it back. I think this looks a lot better than what we started with so I'm quite happy with that and as you can see I painted that with the Brunox uh, rust neutralizer and it's now gone all black which means that rust is not going to do anything more so that means it's time for us to start building the bumper again So now they have the bumper reassembled, the next job for me is to start installing these new gaskets. You can see I've got a left and a right. And again, just like the previous time, I have this little metal rod. But now, thanks to the comments that you gave me, um, I know what to do with it. And uh, that also means I'm going to redo that rear bumper at some point. But basically, this guy is meant to go into the end of the gasket and to just bend it around the edges here so um, I'll figure out how to do that and I've also got the old gaskets here to guide me along um, this will help me understand how to put them back in and if you guys look closely you will see all the marks that are left by the previous staple gun so I have my trusty staple gun with me and I also bought some see-through double-sided tape to just help me along as well there's no real right or wrong here. The factory puts them in with staples. This guy had some uh, double-sided tape. I really think this is the original gasket still. So I'm guessing the factory also used tape. So that's what I'm going to do and uh, we're going to get this set up. quite a good result I managed to get the staples right into the corner here and on the back side you can see that I bent them over this guy will be bent around like this when we are done same goes for that side and this guy will be bent I believe down and under like this so um, I might still trim a little bit off the edges there but I'm going to leave it on the bumper for now like it is so that we can measure how much we want to have extra and you can also see i've got the little guard down here it reinstalled everything is down the bumper the way it should be so i guess the next thing for us to do is to get this thing back on there All right, so the problem here is that I got this rubber too deep into the groove. You can see on this one, it sits a bit more flush. So on this side, I was just dropping down too much. So I just need to pull it up a little bit and then uh, we'll be good. All right, I think this is about as good as it's going to get because this bumper is a little bit lower than this lip 
and I know these things weren't perfect from factory so um, I think I can live with what I've got here right next thing is to get this metal strip reinstalled so I was just putting some white lithium spray into these guys because they they came out quite rusted and I managed to get them nice and clean um, but this is a very weird setup and um, I want to stop this corrosion from happening again. So that's the reason for me doing this. And this guy also got a coating of new paint. So she should be looking all nice and spiffy. The next job is to get the bolts that hold the bumper to the fender reinstalled again. That's done using this bracket. So this bracket sits on the inside of the bumper underneath the plastic and it screws into speed nuts that sits inside the fender. I can't show this to you guys because it's nearly impossible to film down there. In the beginning of the video I said that there were three and that's true. The three at the top hold the fender to the bumper but there's this fourth one down here that holds the fender liner to this bracket as well. and we've got it installed on both sides i have the eight bolts installed this was really 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 tough i think i would say at this point this probably was the toughest job i had to do on the car just due to access it's just really difficult to get the screws back into the speed nuts i think if i was to do this again i would actually take out the fender liners it just makes the access so much better so now we're going to get this number plate mount installed and get the lights in on both sides just make sure that you have this little cable hooked onto this lip here because it's your emergency release for the bonnet. All right, and we are done. You can see that this is newly painted. This is looking really fresh. The grill down here is looking really fresh and so are the lights. I am very, very happy with the result. You'll see this is a little bit better already because I gave it a bit of a polish by hand just to get the dullness away because it was not looking nice and I wanted it to look a little bit better. I'll still machine polish this thing so it shines like a bottle, but for now, this'll do. So this is also where I'm going to be ending the episode. I'd like to thank you for supporting my channel. And if you're not yet subscribed and you like this kind of content, consider subscribing. It really does help me out. So the next episode will not be on the 968, but it will be on my 924 Turbo because my Safari got painted last night and it's coming back very, very soon. So I really need the space for the Safari so that it can stand here in the corner and dry out for a couple of weeks before we start reassembly. So until next time, guys. Goodbye.